Hey, Simon here. Um, I just went and bought this, the Insta360 link. Uh, it's quite expensive. It's being promoted in a lot of places at the moment. I'm a big fan of the three uh, of the uh, Insta360 uh, One X2 uh, 360 camera. I'm a big fan of that, and so I was interested in what they'd pull out for this sort of web camera product. And although it's very very expensive, um, I wasn't sure, uh, you know, what to do about this, given that in Japan it's worth 47,800 yen, I think, basically nearly 350 US dollars. It's worth 300 in the US. So I wondered, is it worth it? Um, and, uh, you know, especially given that I have a DSLR, uh, a Panasonic GH3, which I'm shooting on right now, as well as a bunch of other webcams. So why do I need to spend that much money on a new webcam? Um, and yeah, I was sort of thinking when I saw a, a lot of the tests for it, um, there's a lot of functionality like it follows you if you move around. In fact, if I hold up my hand, oh, actually, it won't do that right now because I don't have it turned on. It'll follow you around. It'll do other things, which I don't really need. Like, I, you know, I don't dance on my videos or anything like that. However, what kind of clinched it for me is, the fact is, if you want to start streaming or you want a really great webcam, um, the best solution is that you, if you have a Mac, you can actually, um, now since iOS 16, you can use your smartphone, your iPhone, as a native webcam and that has a sensor much bigger than any USB webcam has at least until this thing came out um, and that's what I was thinking of doing the problem is I can't install work on software on my work PC so I needed something which would plug and play and work uh, and you know the DSLR has great camera quality which I'm using right now but it's quite big and again I can't use that for work I just use that for my streaming setup and it's not very flexible and it's quite you know it's quite big and it, it ties up a lot of room here so um yeah, I thought that I would do a quick comparison just to see how it looks. So I've got the DSLR here and uh, as well as the other webcams that I've accumulated over the years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a comparison between uh, the Insta360 link, uh, which uh, actually has a bigger sensor than my iPhone XS. That's really what clinched it for me when I thought I'd use my iPhone XS as my webcam. And I realized this has a slightly bigger sensor in it, which is nuts for a webcam. Um, I thought, okay, this is interesting, and it does a few other things, which I'll, I'll feature later on in a direct review. Um, that's what clinched me to buy it, but it's a bit of a risk. It's a lot of money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the performance of this compared to my original workhorse webcam, which actually I still use for work, which is the Microsoft LifeCam. Um, I think I've got that in 720p mode. I've got the most recommended USB webcam. Both of these are under $100, by the way, the Microsoft and the Logitech. I've got the Logitech C922. Uh, I'll show you how that looks. I'll also show you the Insta360, uh, of course, as well as um, I've got an app called Camo uh, for iPhone, which lets me use my iPhone as a web camera connected by USB to my computer. And it actually produces uh, the free version is 720p. The full uh, paid version, I think, is uh, 1080p. Um, and you'll see how good the sensor on the iPhone is. And you'll see why, honestly, if you've got that, you'd never buy a webcam, even for $100. Yet I just bought one for $350. So you'll see the Insta360 and we'll see, does it match up to the DSLR? How close does it get? Right now, the room I'm in, is kind of evening. So the light is going down. So you'll also get to see, I think it should make a difference with the low light. You can see the white balance shifting a little bit as I do this. So that'll be an interesting test for the cameras as well. So let's turn them all on. And uh, take a look, see what you think of the quality of each camera side by side and which ones you like the look of. So turning this on, um, like a Brady Bunch of myself, <laughs> I'll take a moment, take a look, see which ones you like the best uh, and decide if you were just looking at this and you are picking which one to get, which one would you get? Which camera do you, do you think looks the best? Can you pick out which is the DSLR? Um, I've kind of stacked this, honestly, in order. So uh, you may have figured it out already. On the far right of your screen, um, you can see I've got the uh, Microsoft uh, LifeCam. Uh, again, what I like is the white. The, I like the color. It's a bit saturated, but I like the color. It never gets good reviews, by the way, but I, I kind of like this. It's stable. The white balance is stable. The focus is good. Um, so that is the far uh, right-hand side. Beside that is the uh, LifeCam uh, C922. Um, I don't really like it very much. I use it as a backup for my DSLR if I have problems with connectivity. Um, and uh, But you can see uh, the colors are look a little bit washed out. I guess they're accurate and it gets good reviews, but I'm not such a big fan of the camera, but that's the, the, the next one. The one in the middle is the new camera, the, uh, the Insta360 um, link. So you can see what that looks like. Um, beside that, is the iPhone and this is in see, this is in free mode this is in 720p but it can actually but you can also see it's collecting light 
Again, it's got the old iPhone bright and saturated thing that it does with photos uh, on the camera, but I think it actually looks excellent. And you can probably see how this is free. So why would you buy even a $100 webcam, which you can see compared to the two webcams on the end, uh, when you've got this free on your phone, uh, provided, of course, that uh, you've got a Mac or you've got a, a computer that you can install the software on, which I can't do for work. And then finally, on the far left, you've got a DSLR which in my case is my GH3. The only thing about that is though, it's connecting through a 1080p USB uh, sort of capture device, uh, which uh, I, my computer doesn't work very well with USB 3. So it's, a, it's, it's an analog, it's a cheap USB converter. And I think that's why there's some grain in the image. The native image on the, on the, is actually much, much better. Um, so it's probably a limitation on my computer, but you know, they're all plugged into the same USB plugs at the moment. And you can see, um, you know, uh, particularly in the low light. Uh, I should also mention, I mean, I, I, I can adjust. These are all basically native default settings on, on each of these cameras. You can see the difference. Um, but um, yeah, I must say, I'm quite impressed with the, with the sharpness of the middle camera uh, of the Insta360. Um, but at the same time, I must say, I'm a really big fan of the, of the look of the iPhone camera uh, over there. Let's see if I can pop this into focal forward. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good to look at. Let me go through one by one and just show you the cameras uh, at full screen. Um, so uh, this is the uh, this is my regular webcam. Uh, in fact, actually, I think, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go through in this order. So this is the Microsoft Life Cam. Um, yeah, this is my go-to. This is what I use for work mostly. It plugs and plays. It's a workhorse. This is the Logitech C922. Um, I don't I don't like it as much as the the Microsoft one, but it it, it serves the purpose. This is the um, uh, Insta three hundred and sixty uh, camera. You can see that compared to a regular web uh, USB webcam, this is pretty next level. The sensor on this is pretty impressive. Um, plus, there's some tricks with it that I'll, that you can do that I'll show later. It's quite sharp. The 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 light capture is pretty good. The colors are good. So I'm at least compared to my webcams, yes, this is like uh, $90 or $100, and this is $300, but you can see that you are getting something for the money. However, if you have an iPhone for free, you get this with the Camo app, and this is 720p scaled up to, to 1080p. So this is pretty impressive, actually. Uh, I can't install the app I need for this on my work computer, so that's another thing that clinched. And the, the sensor is slightly bigger on the Insta360, but I do like the look of this a lot, actually. And particularly if I had a Mac, um, this is all that you need to do. In fact, I would say do not buy a USB webcam and, and decide you might want to not even buy a DSLR, frankly, because I think the quality on this is so great. And here is my GH3 um, with, an, you know, with a big optical lens that I've used to zoom in. I've got it mounted higher than the other camera, so it's looking down on me a little bit. But yeah, the, again, these are all the cameras together. If I, if I take out the DSLR and I just show the webcams, again, you can probably guess by now which camera is which. Um, but you can see uh, top right is the logitech bottom right is the iphone uh, bottom left is the uh, uh, ms microsoft life cam and top left is the uh, insta360 um yeah they work pretty well so um this is the first one i'm going to do a, a, another video just featuring the um, insta360 uh, link itself and some of the things you can do with it and why i bought it i'll talk about that in more detail but this is just a comparison video for people who are interested uh, and I'll put links below for all the cameras uh, and, and how I generated each of these so that, you know, if you if you want to purchase a webcam, frankly, uh, in, hopefully this will help you. You can decide which, which image you like the look of. Um, so, yeah, enjoy. Peace.